represent them today. The six chairs around the table on the stage represent all of those who have served as public servants. The white tablecloth on the table represents the purity of their response to the call. The table is round to show that our concern for them is never ending. The black napkin in each place setting stands for the emptiness these responders have left in the hearts of their family, friends, and fellow responders. The single red rose in the vase reminds us of their families and loved ones. And the red, white, and blue ribbon around the vase represents the love of our country and our way of life, both of which inspire their call of service. The slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of their bitter faith grains of salt remind us of the tears of their families and loved ones. The glass is turned down at each place setting to remind us that our distinguished comrades cannot be with us today. Join in the fellowship or activities. The American flag is present more in the fact that these responders will not return and to pay tribute to their passing. The Bible is placed prominently on the table to represent the strength gained through faith to sustain those that are lost from service to our country. We were and are founded as one nation God. We look back at, at the folks that we've lost just in our county this last year. You know, we, we lost Caleb, which Caleb touched a lot of hearts uh, in this county. He sat in my office one morning and I said, Caleb, I said, why are you making all those runs at Green? He says, if somebody don't dare do it during the day, who's going to do it? I might be sick, but there's other people sicker than I am. So that makes you look back and think, you know, why do we volunteer? There are special people that volunteer to do, to do our job. We strive to do better training, knowledge of our job, and we do it with the sacrifice of, of our families. So today, yes, this is a memorial service, but we need to thank the people that lets us do our job, the people that does our job. You know, I have a full-time fire department, and I can't go do my job every day without my volunteer. And, and a lot of folks in here that is in my classes understand that. I preach that every time I go out and teach. You know, our volunteers, we are blessed. We cover, Green River covers 69 fire departments in our region, a total of nine counties. Most of those are unpaid volunteers. They come and help us do our job each and every day. So we are blessed to have folks like you. We're blessed to have folks in our communities that lets us do our job. So I salute the people and thank you for each of them. Not only for me and my department, but all the citizens of Mimberton County. I want to thank you and God bless you. Since January 1st.
6 a.m. One minute, 60 seconds. That's how long it took the United States to change forever. At 8.46 a.m. on a clear Tuesday morning, September 11th, 2001, an American Airlines 767 loaded with 20,000 gallons of fuel crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. The impact left a gaping, burning hole near the 80th floor of the 110-story skyscraper, instantly killing hundreds on board and trapping hundreds more in the upper floors of the building. Of the 37 dispatchers who were on duty September 11th, 18 are still on the job. Dispatcher Lightsey hasn't had a good night's sleep in 13 years. He starts every day remembering how bad that day was. The following numbers may bring a tiny bit of perspective to the magnitude of the attack on September 11th, in case you've missed some of them over the past 13 years. 343 FDNY firefighters were killed, along with 23 NYPD police officers, 37 New York Port Authority officers, 1,402 lives lost in Tower 1 alone, 614 died in Tower 2, 291 bodies were found intact at Ground Zero, but only 21,744 remains were found. 1,717 families received no remains to bury. 3,051 children lost at least one parent. 98 FDNY vehicles were destroyed. 1,506,124 tons of debris was removed from Ground Zero. The fires there burned for 99 days. Cleanup of Ground Zero debris cost over $600 million. In all, 2,996 people lost their lives in New York City, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, altogether. Estimated number of New Yorkers were still suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of 9-11 is over 422,000. Many charities and fundraisers have been set up since 9-11 to benefit victims ranging from business owners and companies to New York fire and police families. In closing, I'd like to say that as a volunteer firefighter since 91 and a dispatcher since 2008, I love public service. To me, there's nothing like it. It's nothing like being able to help the public in their time of need and know that I did so to the best of my ability. Also, as I was reminded by dispatcher John Lightsey, just because a dispatcher isn't right there on the scene of a call doesn't mean that we still can't suffer from PTSD or other issues brought around by these high-stress calls. Trust me, some, some calls do stay with you for a long time. If you're in a particular area of public service, whether it's police, fire, EMS, or dispatch, give it everything you've got. Never lose sight of why you chose your profession. Uh, remember the ones who have served before you. Uh, if you have the honor of serving with them, such as Christy or Ricky, learn from them. Don't ever lose sight of what's most important, the public you serve. Be thankful every day you get to come home to your family. As we learned September 11, 2001, the next call you're dispatched to could be your last. Make every day count and never forget. Emergency management is a little different. You don't normally consider my brothers and sisters.